been a great season, obviously, tough end. Uh, you've had 47 different players play. 14 of those players have been academy players. You guys made it to the championship last year. You won. You guys made it to the championship this year. Fell just a little short. I know you talked about how successful this season has been. Um, what do you want to see for this? This, I guess this is a two-part question. What would you like to see for this team moving forward? What would be your goals for next year? How do you see this team progressing? Um, I really don't um, change or rethink anything that uh, we, uh, we as a staff, as a club, uh, assess on this situation just because we lost or win that final. Uh, it's been incredible in in the the number of people that start, uh, how many young players consistently played. Um, then we can talk about the content of soccer. I mean, we can or the metrics uh, that uh, we internally look a lot, the way we arrive in those area and and how consistent and diverse one. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> In a lot of respect, win or lose the final, that's a change that has been incredible. And if we're able to come uh, anywhere close to that next year, uh, we, uh, the club, I know that the club is already doing the right thing, but the, the purpose of a platform like this in an MLS Pro franchise uh, is, is reached, meaning we, we, we think we did everything we could in order to provide better uh, uh, academic kids to the next level. And this is what it's, this platform is about. So then you can look more in depth of the style of soccer that is being played in order to develop the, the, the next uh, uh, good soccer player that in this country. But, but already those experiences and those data and those, well, it's, uh, it's insanely uh, positive for us and uh, even not making the playoff or, or even losing against Orlando on the face, it would be the same. It's just uh, on top of that, we were able to give them a few um, playoff scenario g game to deal with and uh, fantastic. But even f if we finish uh, uh, just bef behind the, the playoff spot, it, it would still have been an amazing season. Kind of building on that question, how do you feel like you've developed as a coach this season and what would you like to see next in your next phase of next year? Tremendously, because we had to rethink, uh, 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 you guys know, but if you look at the details and the data of uh, what the Zawaski and Parente or Jason or Quinton were at only athletic-wise, forget about the, the performance and the tactics and the goals and the whatever, only athletic-wise, those guys, they were animals, animals. And, uh, and now this year, what we've been able to do with 16, 17 years old uh, and rethink a few stuff because they don't have the same weapons. Uh, like I said, uh, even finish six in the league the way we have this year, it's, it's way more uh, than, than winning the title last year. Noah took the loss particularly hard. So you talking to him after the game. What was your message to Noah? Um, it's tough because um, um, there's a couple of guys on top of an incredible um, bunch of guys. There's guys that have uh, extra heart and um, it's, it's tough because they, they care too much. I heard you say, um, you know, your job is only soccer, but soccer is only your whole life too. So when you say <laughs> they care too much, uh, can you kind of give us a little bit more insight or just like, uh, you know, what you saw there? Uh, they, um, I know those guys are devastated because uh, they, they mean too well. Um, so, <laughs> a, those are special individual, and um, and uh, we're not we're, we we're not we're too lucky to have them. Um, so it's tough because we try to make them understood. The younger guys that um, not being on title. We're not special because we play soccer. We're special because we're together and we're lucky enough to to show gratitude and 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 have a common purpose and a cause together. And we try to make everyone understand that uh, if you look at the news today, uh, 
putting your TV on is, is kind of scary. So, so when you're lucky enough just to play soccer and and play a final, don't don't waste it for stuff that are in your control. And so we try to make them understand uh, how important this is and to consider that relax, it's just soccer too. Um, but like I said, there's a bunch of special individual and. Uh, and they, they care too much. Coach, with uh, Coach Nancy being in his first year here and you'll be able to have a full off season with him, what's it like having a coach like him being able to throw ideas off of him with his style of play? <clears throat> well, I, uh, I was looking for a mentor for a while. I've been, uh, I told the guys I've been, uh, I left home for soccer, I was 14 years old, uh, and for 30 years I was looking for somebody that would inspire me uh, uh, in terms of uh, like top to bottom, uh, from A to Z as a coach, and this is Wilfried Nancy. I've, I've been coached and led by player, coaches in, in uh, La Liga, in Ligue 1, in Premier League, and Wilfried is by far the best whether it's tactical content or, or management, or improving people, not only individual. Mm -hmm. So you check all the boxes that you're looking for to see in a leader, and uh, he's by far uh, way ahead. So being, uh, being, uh, watching him every day uh, this year has well, been, been a blessing, and I feel really, really grateful. Do you think next season with the core that you have here with like Coleman and Marco and Mella, you might lean on them a little bit more coming next season? If I what, sorry? I didn't understand. Have, will you lean on like your core that you have, you mm -hmm. know, Nala, Marco and Coleman? Will you lean on them more to be a little more of a, a louder vocal presence, you know, next season? Or well, I don't know about next season, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, uh, um, the guys, um, the guys gave a lot. Right now, they're pretty low. Um, uh, of course, there's a core group of guys that are special, and the club should build a, a pond. Is that how you say? It? On. Uh, but um, being too specific on the, uh, I don't know yet. It's um, there's there's other considerations to to take and. Uh, 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 Mar what what we've been asked Marco to do this year, I'm telling you, beside the the soccer is insane and uh, it's draining. So uh, I I don't know. We'll we'll see. What do you gotta say for all the fans this year? You know, it's short. You know, it came up short you know, tonight, but the fans being there for you. What, what's the message to the fans? So I I've been. Um, I'm sure we all have been, but I've been that kid that his dad, uh, my dad took me on the stadium. I was uh, 10 years old with my little sandwich to see my, my local uh, Lyon team. Uh, it was, for me, the highlight of the week and my, my dad's highlight of the week. So we, we, we know what it means for, for fans to have their, their passion and their, and, their, and their soccer game on the weekend. Uh, uh, to be to be in, in his own city, so the very fact that we we sensibilize our squad on the on the save the crew movement and what almost happened, especially uh, facing Austin, we knew that he was really special. This is why you're asking why uh, Noah took it that way. It's just uh, I've been telling those guys when they see this, they 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 wanted to jump over the wall, like they so they they really care. They really care because they know that we should not respect the fan. The, the fan are soccer. Like they're literally what makes soccer what soccer is. So it, it's not about respect. Is we owe everything to the fans. That simple. So, so based on that and what happened with the with the threat of the local uh, franchise being uh, localized some, somewhere else, it's been. Uh, uh, a heartbreaking story for the guys, but also something that they were willing to to um, to embrace and, and show the fans that uh, how much they care. So this is why a couple of them were devastated today. And uh, but I, I told them otherwise is um, that you guys were able 
we, we nourish each other. So the fact that they helped us that much, we also gave it back on giving them a good moment, I think. So it's a, it's a win-win story and there's nothing to be sad about. Coach, you go early in the second half, the PK, uh, and then Austin just turns it on. Uh, they get three in the second half. What did you see on your end that just allowed Austin to kind of dominate the second half? Uh, so we could have made a couple of better decisions to score the second goal, uh, but uh, I was um, I was uh, I was sure I'm gonna be a little bit uh, pretentious, but I was sure that we were gonna deal with the transition uh, better and that the one that leads to the PK because uh, it was pretty much uh, what Austin was really looking for. Um, we were a little bit naive in that sense. Um, um, even though I don't think it's a PK, but it's a different discussion. Uh, and then, yeah, you try to push. Uh, um, you try to push, and uh, of course, you get exposed. So no regrets after the a little bit of regrets, leaning one nil and, and getting caught that way. But then no regrets. You try to you try to push, and of course, you're gonna get exposed.